Hello everyone, this is Morgan and this is going to be my first recording at length. I had different recordings before but I never talked about anything for more than 10 minutes and this one is going to be uh, lengthier than the ones before. So uh, before I talk about anything, I'll have to tell you something about my recordings. Uh, I might uh, pause in the middle of this monologue and you might uh, you might recognize uh, change in pattern of my conversation uh, so if you find anything unusual when I talk about a topic uh, I apologize it's because I pause in the middle of the conversation in the middle of this monologue and it's only because I want to make this conversation uh, interesting for you guys I don't want to keep thinking about stuff when I have run out of topics so I pause the conversation this monologue sorry and then I get back to uh, I don't have a list prepared but I'll think about what's uh, worthwhile what's both entertaining and productive for you guys the reason behind uh, this manner of uh, conversation or, or recording is that I want to make it a spontaneous process. I don't want it to become uh, an artificial one. I don't want to prepare anything beforehand uh, because it is both therapeutic and contributing, I believe. Uh, if you have whatever you have on your mind and you talk about it, you let it all out. It's uh, useful. For your health and you in the process you talk about things that are uh, only that only exist on your subconscious level you don't talk about it usually because you don't let these things out you block them because they might hurt you but in a conversation like this in, in an audio recording uh, you can talk about anything you want nobody can see me nobody can judge me so whatever I have whatever I've learned in my life uh, I want to uh, project it onto other people so that they can benefit from it. So I would like to talk about honesty, a truthfulness. Now, truthfulness is a relative term. Uh, you cannot be truthful completely. I mean, you will try your best to speak the truth if it is uh, beneficial for you. Uh, so whatever you do, you keep your interests before you. Uh, likewise, I might speak the truth, but there's a lot that I'm holding back and I'll try my best to talk about it. Truthfulness is important because if a man becomes truthful, if he speaks the truth, uh, he becomes the person that has a different perspective about the world. He does not fear what people think about him and in the process he contributes in a way that a man that lies cannot and truthfulness makes you a responsible person if you speak the truth you take responsibility for what might happen what for whatever the consequences may be and it's liberating uh, when you talk about something and you're fearless about it, it liberates you. It takes that burden off your shoulders. And that's one of the missions in, of my life. I want to, I want my process, I want whatever I do to be as spontaneous as it can be. I don't have to exert um, my efforts to the maximum limit because that can wear you out so I mean that's how things should be your work should not be detrimental to your health that's one of the things that everyone should think about and uh, uh, take care of I remember in one of the videos that uh, of uh, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk he talked about um, 
documenting yourself whatever you have on your mind just document yourself that's that's productive i believe uh, to an extent but if in the process of documenting yourself you can think of something productive uh, contributing to the society it's equally beneficial you'll develop a skill of uh, a monologue of the skill of talking speaking uh, may it be public speaking or uh, whether you're alone um, it is beneficial in the long run you develop a new skill but in this process uh, if you're documenting something if it's not entertaining or uh, beneficial to the folks that are listening to you you're wasting that time and I'm trying my best to be productive in the process and forgive me if you um, suspect crankiness in my voice because well it's because I woke up a little tired because I didn't have a good night's sleep I slept for five hours I believe and a good night's sleep is I believe from seven to nine hours and it's really important for formation of your memory and you might feel that you're hungry the next day if you're not uh, rested uh, well and one of the reasons for a lack of sleep is uh, not being honest with yourself uh, always trying to hide things from yourself from from people around you because in a way we are surviving our environment specifically the environment that we live in at this moment this covid environment the the, the consequences that it has created for us <clears throat> so uh in a way i believe it's really important for us to be honest to be uh, truthful and to speak, to express ourselves it can be uh, there can be many outlets for that podcast is one thing uh, which is what i like making videos is another uh, hanging out with friends is another uh, getting acquainted with new people with new folks is also important because in the process you can explore yourself you talk about things that you have never talked about um, uh, being with someone close to you allows you to uh, disclose what's bothering you it's really important uh, conversation communicating with uh, people around you is really important because it allows you to filter out what's bothering you what's on your mind and another thing for a uh, for good sleep is uh, uh, not being engaged in any kind of activity when you're close to falling asleep or when you're intending to go to bed so whatever activity it is um, playing with your phone uh, a video game or watching movies you should keep that for another time so when you when you intend to sleep when you tend to go to bed that's when you have to rest and uh, lay down and be quiet for a while if you can't if you don't want to close your eyes that's fine but you just think about things project project onto what you did uh, uh, think about what you did the whole day and that's what's the best thing for you to do uh, before you go to bed playing with your phone is not and even better than that is to close your eyes lay down close your eyes and uh, stop your thoughts try not to think about anything just breathe in and breathe out until you realize that your eyelids are getting heavier <laughs> that's a good thing that that's that's gonna help you fall asleep in minutes and the reason that sleep comes to mind is that is because uh, sleep is really important if you haven't slept well the next day the metabolic disturbances the imbalance the uh, hormonal imbalance sorry can wreck the whole day and uh, you cannot fulfill the smallest duties of your day and the hormones that are really important in terms of uh, sleep are cortisol, adrenaline, serotonin, dopamine. Each of these hormones 
play plays a different role. Now cortisol is really important because cortisol can be helpful and it can be detrimental to your health. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So if you are engaged in any kind of activity <clears throat> right before you uh, go to bed, uh, the cortisol levels are going to go up. And in that moment, you may not be able to fall asleep. So it's really important to flush that out, to de-stress yourself. And uh, uh, I recently came to know about the fact that uh, it was a research, it was a, it was a, it was a study, and uh, it talked about how one night of uh, bad sleep, one night's bad sleep can cause insulin resistance. That's really important. And they did a research, and in that study, they uh, implemented that on uh, mice. And they realized that after a week of lack of sleep, the mice became insulin resistant. Insulin resistant, sorry. And what was really scary about it was that uh, the process, the, the consequence of it was permanent most of the mice uh, d didn't go back to their normal condition. And I don't believe completely that um, a mice, a mouse's uh, condition reflects that of a human being. But uh, to some extent, that can reflect what can happen to you if you don't fall asleep on time and if you don't wake up uh, on time. Some folks say that they take uh, they, they sleep for six to eight hours and they feel better. Uh, well, that's fine, but uh, are you taking care of the circadian rhythm? Are you falling asleep at night or during the daytime? Because some people, some folks may have jobs that, uh, that don't allow them to sleep at night. So they have day, uh, night jobs, for instance. Uh, now that disturbs their circadian rhythm because before that they used to sleep at night, not at the, not during the day. Uh, that's really important. So now that I haven't slept well, I wish to be alone because I don't want other people to suffer for my bad mood. Uh, and that's what happens when I don't get good sleep. So... It does depend on it, and it does harm your mood because you intend to project your bitterness onto other people. And most of the diseases, most of the psychological diseases, uh, for instance, the schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and panic attacks even, even different kinds of stresses, they can be exacerbated if not created by lack of sleep. So talking about mood, uh, when I'm alone, it's not only, it's not just bad, it, it can also be a good thing because when I'm alone, I can think about different things. I can be creative. Most of the creative things that I did were when I was alone, when I was not surrounded by the people that care about me, my friends, my family. I uh, used to draw, I used to make sketches. And uh, I would do that when I was alone. I needed peace of mind for that thing to happen, for that thing to come to surface. And most of the artists are uh, lonely, they do it. They do it deliberately. It's not a consequence of uh, their creat creativity, but creativity can be the product of their loneliness. And speaking about loneliness, it makes me think about another thing, another factor that can play a role in your creativity. Uh, the 
despondent nature of artists. If you're alone, you have time to uh, think about your life, think about your condition. And in that moment, you try to escape it. And that escaping, that escapism is what creates your art. So when you're alone, you don't have a phone with you, you don't have a computer, you don't have anybody else to uh, get you out of your boredom. That boredom forces you to take out, to bring out whatever you have on your mind, to materialize whatever you have on your mind. So loneliness and no alone is not uh, enough. You have to be sad as well. <laughs> that's a that's a grim way of looking at life, but uh, that is true for most people. In fact, uh, Robert Greene wrote in one of his books, um, "Mastery." The book, the title of the book is "Mastery." He wrote in his book that. Most of our creative acts uh, are derived from our boredom. When we are bored, that's when we are most likely to achieve something uh, on the scale of creativity. So it's really important for you to have all your doors shut on you and have only one door open that's the only way you'll we'll move forward because it's not always good to have many options so loneliness and that a little bit of st- state of uh, that state of a little bit of uh, melancholy is uh, always uh, beneficial it's the same with poisons a little bit of any poison cannot be harmful it can bring a lot of benefits but too much of it you can die um, that's the same philosophy all over the world in almost uh, any aspect of life but the most important thing to consider is that you must not be uh, stagnant you must not stop you should always progress there should always be a process that reminds you that you are progressing toward your goal. It may be anything. Your goal may be anything. But you have to realize that you are moving forward toward it. A stagnancy, that's if you're stagnant, it's like water. If your water stops moving, it gives out a bad smell. Everything grows on it. And what's that saying? A rolling stone gathers no moss. It's something like that. Denzel Washington spoke uh, during one of his speeches uh, that um, he said that do not confuse movement with progress. But how would you uh, differentiate between those two things? Well, here's something that I am kind of hesitant to talk about. I mean, we always say that you shouldn't compare yourself to other people, but here's where uh, that idea becomes valid that you should compare yourself to other people if other people are uh, progressing if other people are moving forward in their careers you will always feel a lag between them and yourself you will always feel that uh, there's a difference between their speed and yours it it is kind of delicate it's uh, kind of fragile you have to measure it carefully you can't just go right on and camp, compare yourself to them on in every aspect of your life. Uh, and then again, who do you compare yourself to when you are analyzing your progress? Not just everybody, only the people whom you know r- enough. You shouldn't compare yourself to someone whom you don't even know, whom you just knew about uh, from TV or from... Uh, from somebody else because you don't know what goes on behind the curtain you don't know how their life is so there are many 
many variables that you are discounting. That's why you cannot compare yourself to those people. Compare yourself to people that you know about enough. I mean, it, it cannot be spoken against this idea of comparison because this is a phenomenon that uh, happens on every scale, uh, from the smallest scale to the uh, biggest one. Look at bacteria. They exchange information through plasmids, through small portions of uh, uh, chromosome genetic material. Uh, if, they do, if they don't do that, they cannot become resistant to antibiotics. In fact, that's just one of the methods, but they still do exchange information. How do you exchange information? You learn from one another. You look at people that are around you, you look at them, and you see how they're doing in their lives, and uh, you find out if there's anything that you can acquire from them, be it knowledge, be it other skills. That's how we are dependent on uh, each other in a society. That's what makes a society. So it's always good to learn from one another. In fact, these days, uh, these times, the only thing that, uh, one of the things, in fact, not the only thing, one of the things that uh, uh, destroys a society, and in fact, we are seeing, seeing it um, everywhere that uh, societies are, where societies are being destroyed. The only, the one, of the th one of those things is that we, as human beings, have lost touch with the idea that you should be dependent on uh, each other. Uh, we have a strong beliefs in individuality. There's no, there, there's no collective, there, there's no collectivism, in fact. That's the term, may, that may not be the right term, but we are not um, collaborating, we're not coordinating with one another which is really important for a society to thrive, not just survive. So just get out of your room, talk to people, just engage in a conversation, in a productive conversation. You shouldn't always think about productivism. Productivism? Productivism? You shouldn't always think about those thing, uh, things uh, in those terms. Always go out, have fun. Uh, staying home, talking to people on social media is not good at all. That's not something that you could benefit from. It uh, breaks you away from the society that you have to uh, contribute to. That's how we are human beings. And um, in fact, uh, of course, you can just live alone. Uh, you cannot be dependent on others, but then the, si the, the chances of your survival becomes uh, slim. They become slim, and that's, uh, that's dangerous. And we, as human beings, as living, living beings, of course, tend to avoid anything that's da dangerous. That's common sense. That's a that, that's simple thing. You cannot argue against that. So you cannot argue against the fact that it's good to communicate with other people. It's good to be associated with other people in a positive way. So I know I'm ranting about topics that are mildly associated with one another, but um, let's just go with the flow. Let's see what I let out. Let's see what I've learned and let's see what you guys can benefit from in doing this conversation uh, and it, it is kind of hard to keep on ranting about everything when there's nobody else that you can talk to when you're not uh, when there's not when there isn't anybody to uh, what do you say how should I say to reciprocate that's the term so in that case a person runs out of topic but uh, that's the beauty of uh, spontaneous action, that you 
let it go, that you let yourself go and you talk about things that are usually present only on the subconscious level. But you let it happen. You let yourself speak about it. And then you learn about yourself in this whole process. In fact, I'll, I would advise uh, you guys to record yourself and then listen to yourself. That's really therapeutic. Uh, I've done this on many occasions, but um, I always try to er erase what I said. I, I always try to um, speak something else uh, against what I said before. This time, whatever mistake I make, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to see what happens. People might laugh. Well, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, at least you made somebody laugh. If you're, if you're even that good, if you're even that bit of good, that you made someone laugh, that you made someone smile at your goofiness, that shouldn't be a bad sign. That shouldn't be a bad thing. That's a good thing. You are productive in some way. You're being a comic. A silly comic at that, but at least you are something for people. That gives you a sign that you have something to connect with other people. That other people, people can relate to you. They can listen to you. If, you, if, if a stranger listens to me and uh, he doesn't find anything to learn from me, but he does find some goofiness that he can relate to, then that's success. It isn't always about money. It isn't always about getting gains from other people. It is sometimes about what makes you similar to another human being. What is the common point that you can gather around and communicate with one another? One thing that I'm guilty of, uh, I shouldn't say I'm guilty of the, those things, but anyway, let's just say I'm guilty of those things. One of the things that I'm guilty of is that I would watch a movie or uh, watch, a, watch someone play video games on YouTube just to s spend my time, just to, uh, for the sake of time pass. Um, I would do that, but I would never allow myself to explore myself explore my mind what was in there what did I do for the past so many years how could I benefit myself through all that knowledge because that knowledge is hidden somewhere in there it has to be brought out likewise you are a sea of knowledge you have to get it all out now how do you do that it all depends on you you play games you go outside, you play a sport, your sporting activity, anything that you want to engage in. If it brings out the emotions in you, the anger in you, if it brings out your creativity, you did a good thing. You did a good service to yourself, not only to yourself, but to the society as well. Because uh, expressing yourself openly helps you flush out all the anger, all the frustration that you hold inside, that you hold within. And if you don't flush that out, you could always use that against someone else. So it's not a good thing. In the, and uh, in that manner, you could uh, harm other people. Uh, that way, you would not have uh, contributed to your society in a good way. When, when people talk about reading books to learn something from them, you shouldn't just read any book. No, you shouldn't just read any book. You should just, you should read a book, a book that um, you have never read before. So read the book that excites you. It could be about relationships. It could be about how to be attractive toward other people. Okay, um, uh, it can be about anything, about biology. How does a plant grow? What are the important things for it? 
it can be any kind of book, but as long as it excites you. If it doesn't excite you and you're reading it only because somebody else did it or only because somebody else advised you to do it and you're not you're not uh, excited by it, you shouldn't do it. Don't do it. It's a waste of time. Your time is really valuable. That's the only asset that you have right now if you're broke. And yeah, when I was talking about botany, about biology, about how a plant grows, I was thinking about something else. I'm thinking now that if you don't have anything productive, then grow a plant. It's a wonderful activity. You're watering it every day, and every day you see it get fresher and fresher. And that colorful reflection that it gives out after it grows fresher reminds you that you have done a contribution that you have done something beautiful those colors would reflect back at you reflect back at you and you'll feel really good it's as if you're growing a child okay it's uh, growing a child you're helping a child grow it's something like that the whole idea behind growing a plant is that you must have something in your life that points you toward the idea of progress. If a plant grows, you're watering it every day and it keeps on growing. It points you toward pro progress. You realize that there is a progress in your life. Be it a plant, it may not be yourself, but it may be a plant, but you still uh, realize, that you, s you still recognize that uh, progress. Uh, you can do anything in your life that reminds you of progress it should be a constant reminder so it has benefits on many levels not on not only health benefits but it uh, binds you with other people you try to transfer the same knowledge to other people you whenever you talk to somebody else you try your best to see if there is any progress in your relationships you become addicted to progress and when there's progress uh, there's growth and then when there's growth there's prosperity there's health healthfulness and so most people have gained weight during this corona pandemic now getting chubbier or fatter it isn't because um, it isn't just because you're not moving. It's also because of the depression. It's also because of the stress that you have uh, undergone. You are stressing yourself for not by not doing anything, by not doing anything progressive. Do little things, but as long as they remind you of your progress, that's it. That's the right thing. And uh, so the process of evolution doesn't stop with you deciding whether you should progress or not. You are evolving one way or another. There's no doubt about that. But um, how would you evolve? That's important. That That is something that you can decide about. Your decisions play a very important role, not only in your life, but in the lives of other people. And how are we evolving i'm not an expert on the on the topic of evolution but as far as i see it uh, i don't see people united as much as they were in the 2000 as much as they were before 2007 or 6 or 5 people are beginning to forget about family about society all they care about is themselves all a person these days cares about is how he should he or she becomes millionaire and then what he's going to do with that money not realizing that one day one day you you're going to hit a threshold no matter how much you earn no matter how much fame you acquire you will not feel better there's a threshold for everything so why chase something that you can never achieve, that you can never uh, obtain. 
let's just leave that and go after things that make us beautiful things that make us reflect upon our lives things that make us human i mean even if you i mean if i i see games right i i i play games sometimes and every game that i buy it's always a, about survival one group killing another group that's it either there are zombies or there are people that are killing one another just to survive almost 70% of those games are all either about zombies or about totally different creatures creatures that you don't know anything about or you haven't even read in your history books it's not like they're dinosaurs or they are something or a bear or something else it, 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 zombies killing zombies that that's kind of weird every game that you see is about that so it's kind of depressing that everywhere that we see we are taught that we should fight for things against one another we shouldn't just be united no we always think that you have to kill another person in order to get what you want that's not the only way there are many times not only it's not only about myself it's not only about my story there are many times that my friends saw someone suffer and they helped them even though they needed that help from themselves more than they more more than the other person and yet they helped them out so we shouldn't lose hope we shouldn't lose faith in humanity because that leads us to believe that we should always uh move against our fellow men and speaking of games so when these these zombie characters it's like they're training us to see that uh anybody that is not you is a zombie like what the hell is that it's not contributing in any way unfortunately unfortunately people are addicted to that because they think it's a thrill it's not a thrill not it's not a thrill when you see those things come to life i'm not i'm not that's not what i i don't mean zombies what i mean is that you're going to see the, the same you're going to experience the same level of hatred in your life in the world that we live in if not now maybe 10 years from now 20 years from now who knows what could happen let's just mean what i wanted to mean let's just say that there will be uh, zombies okay because there are insects that behave like zombies once they are uh, infected with uh bacteria or fung or some sort of a fungus they behave like a zombie who knows something like that could happen um and humans could harm one another who knows what are you going to do then you're going to do how you were trained to do by playing all those video games watching all those movies always moving against one another it they do have an impact people saying that it's just a game or it's just a movie well that's the only thing that you learn from you're not going outside you're sitting in your home all day long either watching movies or playing video games or doing something that that uh signifies uh hatred toward one another so that's the reason why i don't know about others but i feel nostalgic about the past I think about the past and I think uh it was better. It's not just because it's gone and we're always feeling the same way about the past. No, it's not that. It's just that I feel that it was calmer before I got here. I felt good. The level of stress, the level of anxiety that we all have now it didn't exi- exist before not not because we were young uh, uh or because we were uh, more innocent no it's just uh it's just a fact we are getting used to things that excite us and we demand more excitement we are fighting against drugs 
against alcohol, different things, not realizing that the things that we are addicted to the most are the things that are visual. And there should be laws against that. In fact, not even laws. Laws can't help you. You'll, they'll make you desire those things even more. You should just train yourself. You should just educate yourself. You should just wake up and realize what's good for you. That's the best thing that you can do. Better than being taught by someone else. When I was watching this uh, season, this uh, series, The Squid Game, um, I realized that it reflected many things in the society that I, li that I live in. People did a lot of things for money in that series. Um, they killed one another, and spoilers alert, even though I'm not talking about the endings or anything like that, but it just so that you guys don't blame me for it. People did a lot of silly things and a lot of harmful things to one another. But um, that's something that we see in our society as well. People scam one another, they trick one another, they cheat, and all for money, all for pleasure. So I liked it because it uh, let me learn a lot about myself and about my society, that I could turn into an animal any time given the right opportunity. I know there is a potential in every single person. I'm not clean, but you try your best to control that. You can't just let it go. You can't just say, let's see what happens. Let's just be open. No. There's a reason why we have religions. I'm not saying that all religions are completely good or, or that they are completely good, that there are many aspects of religions that are not good, but that's the reason why we have laws, that's the reason why we have principles, that's the reason why we are humans. If we were to live like animals, it would be harsher than this. In fact, it is possible that we are moving in that direction. So, yeah. Everything that we see uh, either reflects what we are in real life, like the squid game that I just talked about, or teaches us to be that. So either we are the product of what we see, or what we see is the product of us. There's no way around it. So if you think that what you see or what you play is not relating is not related to you it's 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 a lie you're lying to yourself so be careful what you watch be careful about the people that you hang out with as the saying goes birds of a feather fly together i don't know how many grammatical mistakes i just made but anyway you get the gist so be careful about your life, um, try to express yourself, be friendly with those around you, respect your family members, spend good times with them, and let them talk to you and talk to them if you want to. Share your feelings. That's something that you could do. That's something that you might have learned from this silly monologue. So I think that's it for today, guys. Until next time, take care.